Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with another review and I hope you are doing well. This time it is a outdoor sport watch. It is the Polar Grid X. And in this review I'm going to tell you all the pros and cons that you need to know before buying this watch. And I'm also going to tell you if this is really a proper outdoor watch. Enjoy the review! And welcome back to the review of the Polar Grid X Outdoor Sport Watch. And those of you who are following me already for some time, you might have seen the change on my wrist basically five months ago. And yes, without a watch, I feel quite naked. Um, I don't know if you know that feeling. But um, before five months ago, I had this watch on my wrist. It is the Sunto Ambit, and I really love this one. But then Polar asked me if I could do a review on the Grid X, which is a sport outdoor watch. And I said, oh, of course. Now, uh, the question remains, and I'll answer this at the end, is this one going to stay on my wrist or is this one coming back on my wrist again? Now, um, for those of you who are following me already, you know that I am a 100% independent reviewer. So manufacturers are not paying me for my reviews. But if you are new to my channel, then you might not know this. And I think this is quite important to my channel. So I am a 100% independent reviewer. I'm not being paid for my reviews. Um, and if you are done at the end and you like what I do, if you're new, then please subscribe to my channel and give the video a like. And don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I uploaded a new video. And with more followers, I can make more reviews. Simple as that. Now, let's continue with the review on the Grid X itself. When I start reviewing, what I always do is just check the specification that the manufacturer states on their website. Um, and with the Polar Grid X, this is of course no different. So I put it on my precise scale and I measured a weight of 65.6 grams. Polar promises a weight of 64 grams, so this is not a very big difference. Um, the size, I measured it at 47.5 millimeters in width and the thickness is 13 millimeters. Now, the casing itself, it's made out of a combination of resin and stainless steel. Resin is a sort of a plastic, um, to say it sort of impolite, and stainless steel, but that's the bezel and of course where the attachment of the wristband is. And also the five buttons, they are made out of stainless steel. Um, what you also should know is that the glass that is on the uh, Grid X, it is sapphire glass. And sapphire glass is extremely scratch resistant. And after five months of outdoor use, I don't have any scratches whatsoever. So that is pretty okay. Now, the wristband itself, it's made out of a rubbery material and it comes in two different sizes. The watch that I am testing here is a size M to L, which has a wristband that can expand from 145 millimeters to 215 millimeters. There's also a size S available and that one has a size from 130 millimeters to 190 millimeters. One thing that you also should know about this review is that I'm doing this indoors because here I can have the circumstance and show you the watch face basically quite decent. Um, I've been shooting a lot of stuff outdoors and when I came back uh, basically it was one big failure because what I experienced already in outdoor life with the watch is that the watch face itself, the, the, the glass and the screen behind it, uh, it does a lot of reflections of the sun, of clouds, of trees and that is quite hard to shoot outdoors. Now in here I've got a light over there, I've got a light over there and I can make it quite visible now. So that's why you see this um, indoors. Uh, but this remark on the readability basically of the watch face, um, it's a general remark. It's not only video related because it's something that I noticed in the outdoor life as well. It's not always that easy to read. What I do like about the Polar is the easy way of setup. Um, first of all, when you buy it, of course, you get a manual in a lot of different languages. Um, for a basic setup, this is pretty okay. Um, but what is even better is basically the Polar Flow website. And Flow is basically the app that Polar uses with most of their uh, devices. Now, uh, with the Polar Grid X, this is of course not different. And if you plan to buy this watch, visit the Polar website and have a look on what kind of information is already on there, like the manuals that they have online, the tutorials, uh, the how-tos, that kind of stuff. It's really worth the effort to spend some time before you buy this watch. But I really like this. Uh, also, the application on my smartphone, I have an iPhone, 
um, I think it is really one of the best apps uh, for a smart watch like the Grid X that there is out there. Now, um, charging, it's done with a USB cable, of course. And, and it's got a pretty nice docking station. There's a little magneto in there and you have to fit the watch on that and then it goes all by itself. This is of course also for the data transfer. Um, and charging, I mentioned it a couple of times, it takes about one hour, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, but approximately an hour after a week of usage. So I think that is pretty fine as well. One thing that I always like is if gear is built logically. And with the Polar Grid, this is definitely the case. Um, as I mentioned before, it is a touchscreen. And when I use my fingers, I can swipe from right to left or from left to right. And then I will get different information in the watch face itself. And also sliding down and sliding upwards gives different kinds of information. Now, what I did notice is that the touchscreen um, functions very well, even if I'm having cold hands. You've got these special gloves. It also works with the special gloves, but with normal gloves, it doesn't work. And if the screen is wet or you've got wet hands, then of course, this is an absolute disaster because it doesn't work at all. Next to the touchscreen, the watch has got five buttons. Uh, the one on the top left is dedicated for the backlight, which is very convenient in the nighttime. Um, down left is basically the menu button and also the go back button. Then top right is go up in the menu. Uh, down right is going down in a menu and the middle one which is uh, the one with a red dot in the middle is the OK button or also the start button so it's got a double function. Um, I do like the buttons because they are quite big and there is a nice little structure uh, on them so that makes them not slippery at all even when you're having cold hands or wet hands and I've noticed that the buttons are also very usable if you are wearing gloves. One thing that I don't think is very practical is that the, basically on the bezel itself, uh, the functions of the buttons are not written on it. And I've got some watches um, from, for example, Sunto and Casio. They have got their function written on the bezel and especially when you're in uh, activity and you have to pay a lot of attention to different stuff, then basically the reading of the function of the button on the bezel is very, very convenient. So I think that is a minus point. The Polar Grid X is a outdoor sport watch. So that means that it has a heartbeat sensor. And now let me take it off my wooden thingy because the heart rate sensor in this case, like all modern um, smartwatches, it is a optical one. And you can see it by the little sensors beneath here. The optical heartbeat sensor is built out of 10 lights and they are orange and red mainly and there is one green one. At the different colors, they transmit the light into different depths in basically your wrist. Um, and because of this difference in depth, they get a very accurate heart rate measurement. Now, the sensors are basically the four dots that you see underneath here as well. Uh, and they basically reset the light that has been transmitted into your veins from the light source itself. So that's how it works. What I noticed is that the heartbeat sensor is very, very accurate. I compared it to some other uh, watches, sport watches that I own, and this one is absolutely the best in measuring. One thing that I should remark, and it's got a little bit to do with the comfort, is that you can see that the optical sensor is basically on a sort of a hill. And this hill, this round part, um, it depends very much on how tight you wear your um, wristband. Because when you wear it too tight, I don't like the feeling of this. It rubs into my skin, basically. When you wear it too loose, your, uh, sense, the sensors cannot do their measurements very accurate. So there is a sweet spot uh, that you will have to find for wearing this one with the greatest comfort and also with the most accuracy. One thing that I also noticed is that when you're in the outdoors and you get dirt between basically the skin of your wrist and this hilly metal part, uh, please be quick with cleaning it because the sand and dirt, it will rub your skin and that is not nice in the end. Now it's back on its log again and let's continue with talking about the sports functionality because this is really a great sports watch. Um, it does everything from measuring the heart rate, the pace, lap time, calorie use, distance, that kind of stuff which you expect from any watch. And if you take this together with the Polar Flow app on your 
the smartphone and also together with the uh, Polar website. There is so much data that you get and that you can analyze afterwards after a training session um, so that you can really, really improve your condition basically if you want it for this purpose. Now, I'm not going to do a full sports review because I'm an outdoor gear reviewer and not a sports watch reviewer. Um, but what I did like about this watch is that, well, when I'm wearing it and I've got the heart rate sensor on all the time, um, then it will tell me when I've been sitting uh, behind the computer for too long because it will basically tell me to get off my lazy bum and start doing some activity. And that's something that, of course, I should upload always. Before heading on to the outer functionality of the Grid XS, one little gimmick that I really liked on this watch, and that is the sleep monitor. Um, the sleep monitor measured, of course, because of the heart rate uh, sensor that is in the watch, the quality of your sleep during the night. And when you wake up in the morning and you sync your watch with the computer or with your uh, Flow app on your smartphone, you can see really, really well in a diagram how well did you sleep. You can see the parts of deep sleep, of light sleep and also the RAM sleep and the phases that you've been basically awake. Um, and for me, this was quite well confronting in the beginning because I saw normally I sleep about five hours a night, which is fine for me. I feel fine afterwards, but the watch kept telling me that I should, that I basically had a bad night again. Um, because of the scientific background on the Polar Flow website, I followed their advice and I went to bed on a more regular basis. And I discovered that during the, the months that followed, uh, basically I got more sleep and I got a better quality of sleep. Yes, of course, I still have bad nights, but it really helps me in getting visible how my night has been and not only depending on how I feel in the morning. And especially when you've done some exercise, this recharging at night is really important and that's why they also have a nice feature that is called the nightly recharge. It's a, it's a number that is given to the quality of your sleep and if you are able basically to continue with a new training again. Now, so this is a thing that I did not expect it to be on the watch, but I really love it. And that will be for me a reason to buy it. So far, I've been pretty optimistic about the Polar Grid X, but now let's head on to its outdoor functionality. And this is where the going gets tough and the tough get going. Now, every outdoor watch that I have been reviewing for the last couple of years has had a compass, a barometer and an altimeter on board. And the Grid X is not different in that respect. Uh, but before I head on with the altimeter and the barometer function, um, there is a little bit that you should know about how actually a barometer and an altimeter work together. Now, the barometer inside the Grid X is like in any other outdoor watch, it's just a pressure sensor and it measures the air pressure that is around us, that is pressing on everything. Now it is possible to translate by basically physics to translate a pressure into a altitude. Now, to explain this, you need to know a little bit about basically physics. Um, we've all agreed in this earth that at sea level, which is zero meters, we have a air pressure of 1013 millibars. And I talk about millibars, but actually hectopascal is the official unit. But since we are all talking still millibars, I keep on doing this as well. Now, um, what we also know is that with every meter that we go up in the air, the barometer um, basically descends by one millibar. So the higher you get, the lower the barometric pressure. Now, since we know this, it is quite easy to calculate from the barometric pressure the altitude. Now, there is one little catch. For example, I am traveling up a mountain and I'm staying at 2500 meters in my mountain cabin or in my tent. I'm, I'm not moving and I have got a basically an altitude on my watch of 2500 meters. Now, what happens during the night, a low pressure weather system is approaching. And what now happens is that because it is a low weather system, the barometric pressure inside my watch drops, which means basically, mathematically and physically, that my watch is recalculating this 
drop of air, of this drop of pressure, into altitude. And when I wake up in the morning, my watch tells me that I am at 3000 meters. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't realize, that the barometric pressure and the altimeter are connected together. What you should always do is if you have a watch or you have a GPS where a, there is also a barometer pressure sensor in there, always calibrate it whenever you can. So when you reach the mountain cabin, put in the number that the altitude the mountain cabin is on. And when you do a hike, you've got really a lot of signs along the way. And most of them, especially in the Alps, they also have got the height on the pole as well. So calibrate whenever possible. Now, measuring the altitude by barometric pressure is one way. The other way is, of course, the GPS, Global Positioning System. A lot of satellites around the Earth that tell us basically where we are. It is in every car navigation system and also in every smartphone nowadays. And it is, of course, also in the watch. Now, GPS, and especially in combination with the geographical map, gives most of the time a pinpoint accuracy on the height that you are at. But GPS is also influenced by some things that we don't have any influence on. Like for example, the density of the forest above you, the leaves, um, the weather that is approaching. Sometimes really bad weather does have some influence on the reception of a GPS. But also if you are walking into a mountainous area and narrow valleys, GPS reception is not always that great. So bear this in mind. Now, what do a lot of manufacturers of smartwatches do? They take the barometric pressure, recalculate that into a basically altitude, but they also take the GPS number. Now, they combine this together and then you get a very accurate reading most of the times. Now, with the Polar Grid X there is something funny going on and I will have to explain this a little bit because of the manual. Um, when I have been reviewing the watch in the Alps, it was absolutely spot on. It maybe was a meter uh, difference between the place that I actually was with a sign saying how high I was and what the watch tells me. Um, I checked it also with the GPS and the app on my phone as well. Um, it is most of the time spot on. Because I noticed on some hikes that it was so very accurate, I asked Pola, what is the method behind basically the, the GPS and the barometric pressure sensor and the altitude calculation. And um, there was one thing in the manual that also triggered this question and I will have to read it to you. And let me get my notes. Um, and this is what Polar basically claims in the manual. Barometric altitude is automatically calibrated two times via GPS during the first minutes of a session. In the beginning of a session, before calibration, altitude is only based on barometric air pressure that can at times be inaccurate depending on the conditions. Altitude data is post-corrected after calibration. So any inaccurate readings seen during the beginning of a session are automatically corrected afterwards. And the corrected data can be viewed in the Flow web service and app after your session after syncing your data. Now, what does this mean? This does mean that when I calibrate the grid X according to the manual and according to what I'm used to, calibrate whenever possible to get an accurate reading, um, the watch actually, actually is starting to recalculate with the GPS data. The danger in this is that if I am into a mountainous area and I am, for example, below a very steep rock face, maybe the GPS data is not that correct. Even sometimes with um, very bad weather, thunderstorms, and also in forest area with a heavy um, foliage above me, um, GPS reception is not always that accurate. So if the grid X starts recalculating after calibrating, I think this is pretty stupid because I have calibrated it. I know the exact value. And the only change that I want to see is if I go up the mountain, down the mountain, and maybe know the influence of a weather system that is coming into the area. So that's what I want to know. I don't want the watch basically to recalibrate because of the GPS. Is this all? No, there is another thing in the manual and I will have to take the paper again. Because what it also says is, 
To get the most accurate altitude readings, it is recommended to always manually calibrate altitude whenever a reliable reference, such as a peak or a topographic map, is available or when at sea level. Altitude can be manually calibrated from the full screen altitude training view. Press OK to set the current altitude. Yes, so they advise me to manually calibrate it because this is the most accurate one. And then afterwards, they tell me that the GPS is correcting my calibrated altitude. I don't get this. Um, so I send an email to Polar and I send some other questions as well. And till the moment that I'm shooting this video, um, Polar only came with the small announcement that they don't want to disclose this information at the moment. So that leaves me totally clueless about basically how good the barometric pressure and the altimeter work together. And there is one other thing going on. Um, Polar took the effort to put a barometric pressure sensor in the watch, but they failed to do anything else with it than use it for the altimeter. In every outdoor watch that I own, I have got a dedicated button on the watch itself and a dedicated screen to the barometer. Um, because the barometric pressure trend, you know, going up, going down, whatever weather fronts are coming near my area, it shows me what kind of weather I am expecting. Is it very stable for a long time? Then nothing is going to change. Do I have a sudden drop? Yes, then I'm expecting bad weather. If it's rising, I most of the time get very good weather. This is key information for me as a outdoor guy. The Polar Grid X does not have this, and this is for me a major failure. Now, doesn't Polar do anything with weather? Yes, they do, because it is of course a smartwatch and it is connected to my iPhone. Um, I have got a weather connection to a weather app, a general weather app. Um, what I've noticed here in the flat Netherlands, the weather app that they use, the general one, it is quite accurate. But when I was in the Alps, I've seen so many different changes, especially when you cross a mountain ridge. Um, the weather on one side is totally different than the other side. Um, and the weather app is most of the time not that accurate. So if you use a weather app Polar, then please use a dedicated weather app that is special for the region. For example, the Meteo Swiss app. Um, that one is always perfect and spot on. What I also don't like is the fact, yes, they have a system built into the watch that the app stores the weather trend for the coming two days, but only when it was connected to my smartphone for the last time. Now, what happens if I don't have smartphone reception? Then I still have old weather data in my watch. I'm relying on a thing that I should not be relying on. So don't go that way. So in that respect, I think the weather app in the watch, it's not that clever either. Now, am I done yet on the outdoor functionality? No, not really, because there's one other thing that's been bugging me quite a lot. When I go outdoors and I want to know my compass bearing or I want to see the altitude, I need to start a session. And in my case, it's most of the time, it's a hiking session. And that means that the watch starts logging everything that I do. Um, for me, this is not necessary. What I would love to have on this watch is just a dedicated button for the compass that I have immediate access without logging anything else or that I can see the altitude also with a separate button and not seeing all the information on distance, speed, that kind of stuff, my heart rate. I don't need this all the time when I'm hiking outdoors. Now, this sounds like a lot of negative information on the Grid X as a outdoor watch. Does that mean that I don't like it as a outdoor watch no there are a few apps that i absolutely do like and one of them is the Komoot application Komoot or Komoot, i don't know how you say this in english um, it's an application uh, that is basically made for the smartphone and it is a sort of community like strava and some others that connect people with routes together and you can hike a route you can log it onto your smartphone or onto your watch in this case um, and you can share it afterwards on the Komoot platform what I do like about Komoot is that it is very easy to give a lot of information about your route that you designed. Um, so it is also easy to get routes from other people and get them into your app on the phone and with the phone connection, get it into your GridX as well. As soon as you've got the Komoot route into the GridX, 
uh, basically it tells you where to turn left and where to turn right. Um, that's all. It doesn't do anything else. You can't see the map, uh, you can't zoom in, zoom out. But I do like the fact that I can just have a look at my watch and see if I need to turn left or right and leave my smartphone in my backpack or into a pocket of my pant. Um, but on the other hand, if I got a smartphone with me anyway, then why should I look on my watch the whole time? And if I'm looking onto the smartphone, I see the whole map. I see basically the surroundings of where I am. It gives me more awareness. So in that respect, maybe it's smart and stupid a little bit in the same time. Now, there's one other thing which is really, really clever on the GridX, and that is the function called Hill Splitter. Hill Splitter, because of the GPS and the altimeter, it registers, of course, when you're going up and when you are going down. And this one, the Hill Splitter, splits the hill basically at the top. Um, this is something that I used to do most of the time with my other watches. Um, when I'm hiking, I have to make a waypoint basically of where the top is, uh, where the peak is. Uh, this one does it totally automatically. And it was really funny when I was doing uh, a hike with my brother-in-law in the Swiss Alps that we were planning to do basically two tops. And when I got home, I actually saw that we did seven tops uh, or nine tops in total, but seven tops in a small row after each other. And in this way, the hill splitter is really nice. What hill splitter does not do in combination with maybe the Komoot app is that he knows the route that you are doing and it does not predict how many kilometers and how many altimeters you still have to go before you reach the peak. So in that respect, um, there is a little bit of improvement as well. But hill splitter, when you get home and you look at all the data, it's really a great feature to have. Before I head on to my verdict, I would like to make a few remarks on the ruggedness of the Polar Grid X. Because it is an outdoor watch, I expect it to be rugged. I already mentioned uh, the totally scratch-free sapphire glass after five months of usage, but also the resin casing and the stainless steel, it still looks brand new which is quite logical because the Grid X has been tested according to the military uh, 810G standard and it complied so it should be rugged as well. Now waterproofness it is rated for 100 meter of water on top of it so if you take this watch into a swimming pool it should be not a problem into a lake it should not be a problem either would i use it for diving activities no certainly not because that is a different watch but is it rugged yes it is on to my verdict how do i rate the polar grid x well in the first place i like the looks of it because of the stainless steel and it's not that big and also the weight is quite fine i also like the wristband because it is soft to the skin and it's very well adjustable and you do have to find that sweet spot to get the optical sensors not pressing into your skin that's something you just have to be aware of um, the screen, it can be challenging to read from time to time because it sometimes reflects a lot of basically clear sky, trees and that kind of stuff. Now, charging takes about one hour and I had to do this about every seven days. So I think that is fine too. I do like the Polar Flow app because it gives a lot of information um, if you want to analyze whatever you have been doing. Now, Outdoor, yes, it is a very rugged watch and that is of course a big pro. I also like the compass because it's accurate and I like the GPS because that seems to be spot on all the time as well. Um, the altimeter, yes, I do like it because it's proven to be quite accurate. But what I don't like is the method behind it and that Paula cannot explain to me actually how it works. And I don't think that is the way to go. Then I also think that the barometer should be well, used more. Um, please give me a screen that I can see what the barometric trend is because that is something that should be in a outdoor watch. And also what it doesn't have is for example a weather warning which is also very important that you get a warning whenever you're paying attention to the outdoors and weather is changing a weather warning can help you be safe. And the use of a barometer is also very important because the watch does have a weather application but you will need a smartphone connection for this and we don't always have this in the outdoor. So please give me a dedicated barometer screen with everything in it. Now the integration of the Komoot app I think that is a really nice thing to have. Um, the hill splitter function I do think that is absolutely brilliant and even more brilliant is I think the sleep monitor. That would be a reason for me to buy this watch. 
Overall, I think that the Polar Grid X is a super multi-sport watch, but it lacks in the outdoor department. Um, the watch retails for 429 euros and 90 cents. And I think that is quite a hefty price tag to pay for any sport watch, but especially for a outdoor watch with flaws. And therefore I rate the Polar Grid X at 7.1 out of 10 points total. I hope you like this review and that it is useful to you. And if it is, please give it a like and leave a comment below. And um, also, if you've got any questions, remarks, suggestions, use the comment section because that's what it's for. And I'm more than happy to answer everything that you can throw at me. Now, if this is the first time that you've seen one of my videos and you liked it, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I uploaded a new video. More followers means more reviews on a regular basis. So many thanks if you do. If you like this video, then please keep watching because I've got more interesting gear reviews for you. Um, one of them is on the Casio G-Shock Mudmaster Edition. Link up here, link in the description too. Um, also, my outdoor gear favorites, I made a special playlist of this one, also in the description below and up here as well. And now the answer to the question that I made in the beginning. Am I going to put the Polar Grid X on my naked wrist or is the Suunto coming back? Well, neither of them, because yesterday the postman brought me the Garmin Phoenix 6 and the Garmin Instinct Solar. So if you are curious for the reviews on those two, that's a good reason to subscribe to my channel now. Enjoy watching or enjoy the outdoors and stay safe. Ciao, ciao. Bam.